Hi everyone, alongside Mike Trosel, I'm Dave Giancola. Thanks for joining us once again for another U.S. Open Classic finish. Payne Stewart woke up on Sunday of the 1998 U.S. Open with a four-stroke lead, 18 holes away from claiming his second U.S. Open title, and he remained in good shape for a good part of the round, shooting a respectable two over par on the front nine at the Olympic Club. But Dave, things started to get interesting as the players made the turn when 1993 U.S. Open champion Lee Jansen, who began the day five behind Stewart, birdied number 11 to move into red numbers on the day. Let's take you to the 13th tee at the Olympic Club with Jansen trying to track down Stewart to see who will win their second U.S. Open title. And that is where Lee Jansen is, putting the peg in the ground, the yardage 199, the whole location back left. And as Johnny Miller indicated earlier, Raymond Floyd, it is a very accessible whole location today. I would have expected to see many more birdies than we've seen here. The, the greens are firm and you just let it land in the first portion and the ball feeds right back there. There are those two bogeys in the first three holes as Lee Jansen at that time with seven shots back, but three under in the last eight holes including that fortunate bounce at 11, which produced the last birdie. See a very narrow green. The whole location's right there, excuse me. It's right back there in the back left. And he's playing a five iron, Johnny. Club of choice here. Right there. That looks real good, fellas. A little right of the flag, up high, real high shot. It'll take a hard bounce and feed. That's a good shot. That's a good shot. That is a wonderful shot by Lee Jansen. Momentum. Again, he's the only player in the last 13 groups that is under par on today's round. How about a look from the MetLife blimp at this beautiful shot? over the bunker, which is just in front of the green, takes the kick left, and again, ball's feed to the back of the green at 13. Executed perfectly by Jansen, back to 11. It's interesting, in 93 at Baldessarol, Jansen finished two ahead of Payne Stewart when he won the championship, now trails by two, but with a birdie chance ahead as Tom Lehman studies his second shot. A lot of reflection going on here, Dick. Not much behind it to the left, but there's, but there's uh, behind it to the right. With you. David yeah. Fabe? Well, this final uh, pair is being timed now. There are no so bad times to date, but they are out of position in relation to the group ahead of them. Well, if you guys would have paid closer attention to that, Jack Nicholas might only have about six major championships. <laughs> You expect me to comment on that? <laughs> Tom Lehman, four shots behind Stewart. 183 yards to the hole. The wind has picked up and directly in the player's face. This is a little uphill. This is a four. These players have no idea they're being timed and this shot going right of the hole at the center of the green. Good play. Payne Stewart not just in the intermediate cut of rough but has a perfect lie. The grass is supporting the ball very well. 167 yards to the hole. This is a seven iron. They jump all over this to get it back to that hole. The whole location right there. A shot going at the left side of the green needs to get right some and comes up well short. I just don't think he had enough club there into this win. Second shot in the air at the par 412 for Bob Tway. 152 the yardage down the hill and short sided mm. in the rough. He hit it about 142 yards, Dan, which is not what you want to do here. Tway at plus three, 
playing with Nick Price, who also is at plus three. One over on his round today. This hole has played surprisingly hard today, Mark. Uh, you'd think it, it would be birdieable, but there's only been about half the guys hit the fairway and even less than that that can get the ball on the green. So the, the hole is playing uh, very difficult. Well, Nick Price has not yet made a birdie today. In fact, he hasn't made a birdie on the backside all week, Raymond, but he's only got 143 yards here, just a nine iron shot. You would think he could get this one within, say, 15 feet of the hole. He needs to make something happen. Yeah, he's going to need a birdie or two coming in to have a chance at this championship. This looks pretty good. That is a good shot. Grab it. That'll give him a good good opportunity there. 12 after playing in the middle of the pack all week as you take a look at Nick's back nine line. Again, no birdies on the backside this entire championship. But as you said, Raymond, 12 now playing the third most difficult. We've tried to figure it out. <laughs> Haven't been able to come up with no. any kind of answer. MetLife blimp cruising high above the skies of Olympic Club. Some clouds beginning to move in, but still above High enough, you've got blue sky, and that's where Snoopy 2 has been cruising all week. Final round of this U.S. Open championship. Payne Stewart, his lead has been paired to just two, and he's at 11. Well, it hasn't drawn a very good line, this intermediate cut of rough. The ball has settled down. You can see just about half the ball above it. Very thick right in here. Got a little funny ridge there in his way also, right? He does. He has to deal with that little slope from left to right as well as a ridge. There's a ridge that end. runs here, here. and it, it browse right in this area here. So it's sort of awkward. Can he, do you think he'll throw it just above the ridge? Or into no, the I think side he of has it? to go into the side of it and below it, John. So it'll kick right pretty good. Yes. He landed it short of the ridge. It's released. Oh, that's another brilliant play from around the greens. Got to give him a lot of credit, Roger. Where he's put the ball on his approach shots, he could be a lot higher than he is at the score. And despite that nice play by Payne Stewart, Lee Jansen circling around a birdie putt, which would get him to within one of Payne Stewart. It has been quite a march by Lee Jansen. This is right down the fall line too, Dan. This is a pretty straight putt. I would expect he should make this one. off. Cameras clicking in the background, John Schroeder. Somebody's using the shooting pictures with a camera. Mm. What, I mean, a, what a time, huh? Yeah, it's funny how you hear things when you don't want to. <laughs> it's pretty quiet out here as it is, but uh, might have startled him a little bit. Hopefully, he should be able to re regain his composure. Well, he waits to 11. Tom Lehman's birdie putt. Pulling a lot of putts, guys. 13. Lee Jansen has gathered himself. This again to get within one and get back to even par. Yeah! And Jansen has Payne Stewart in the crosshairs now within one. 2-11. Payne Stewart, the short putt for his par. Fine save. So Payne Stewart, seven. Many regard a lucky number. Seven years ago, he won the championship. He has seven to play, leading by one. Birdie putt on the way for Nick Price at 12. Mm. Just can't get it. Boy, he's had fits with this back nine. Still birdie-less. Early on, it looked like he would make the best challenge of anyone. To 18. This was a, a while back on tape. That was that birdie attempt by Tiger Woods at 18 to finish his round. And like so many putts this week, uh, strong and long and awry. And then for his par. 
severe kick out. And now for bogey. And a 73, plus 10 for the championship. 74, 72, 71, 73, and not a very happy 22 year old leaving the 18th. At the 14th, Lee Jansen. That's a three wood right up the middle of the fairway. Beautifully struck. Fuego, he is on fire right now for Olympic Club. When you're playing this kind of golf and this kind of pressure, I cannot tell you how exciting that is to watch uh, from on the ground level. At 12, Bob Tway's par attempt. Never got it online at all. So Bob Tway drifting further and further down the leaderboard. In the meantime, that's a look at the tree line shoot which the players will come out of on the tee at the par 412. They moved this tee back 26 yards. So it becomes a, an even more critical driving hole as again it slopes severely left to right the fairway and Payne Stewart takes a look down out of that tree line shoot. His lead now being trimmed to just one. And this hole favors a draw. This is the one hole out here almost that uh, Tom Lehman's got to figure his shot is perfect. And uh, for a person who cuts the ball or even hits it straight, this tree limb that's sitting right here is a real issue. I tell you, you got to be very careful of that one. This ball turning over right to left. Just in the left center of the fairway, it'll start kicking right. That should stay in the fairway, I believe. That's a beauty. That's long and in the right center, and he's going to have a wedge in his hand. Very long. Divot. Uh -oh. Divot. Oh, divot. Divot settled into Could the. Could see that coming. Sand-filled divot. Felt, felt like Vanna White there. I could see that coming on bankrupt. That was a bad one. That's not very lucky. Now aim it. This sets up for him. He'll like this hole, Johnny. He likes to put that little draw up there, and with, with all of this hill here, that, that fits him beautifully. Softly, it's going to be good. It is good and out of the divot, unlike Payne Stewart. Payne Stewart started the day, four shots in the lead. Lee Jansen playing the best golf of all in the last 10 holes has moved to within one as he too seeks his second U.S. Open title. Par four, second shot. Lee Jansen trails Payne Stewart by one. John Schroeder, take us through it. 161 yards. The wind is what, what there is is directly behind him. Pins cut in the back right portion of the green. Seven iron shot. Ball's above his feet, so he's got to be careful not to pull it. He set that way up in the air. A little left, I think, of where he wanted it to go, but it's going to be right in the middle of the green. Very nice. Very nice. Jansen four under the last 10 holes to move into tight contention. This a moment ago, Nick Price trying to step on the gas, get something going. He's four back of Payne Stewart. This is a six iron. Again, 199 the yardage, back left hole location. Pops into the rough. Not a bad lie though. He's not gonna like it. And back across to 12. Tom Lehman. Payne Stewart about to witness in person the unfortunate break he got here. Well, he's been very fortunate throughout the tournament. It's one of the few bad breaks we've seen him have, but you'd hate to see something like this influence a, a major championship, but uh, you've got to keep your wits. You've got to be uh, 
collect yourself and go ahead and play the best shot you can from there. Tom Lehman now 169 to the hole in this hole location. Not a good one for Tom. I, at a time when he starts to be needs to be a little more aggressive, he's going to have to look left of this hole. This is a tough one to get at with a right to left shot. This is a seven iron. Trying to hold it, Roger. He's trying to, Johnny, but this is going at the left side of the green. Just a tough shot for his flight, like you said. As you can see, Payne coming up to his ball here. He's got, uh oh, I see it. How can that happen to me? But now you got to get it back together. The toughness has got to come in there. This is a U.S. Open Championship, and Dad Gummit, do what's necessary. Almost use this as a challenge. That's right. And I think he's got that resolve. I can see it. He, he, I think he's going to be strong with it and play, play something that'll get him on this green. And that is the worst divot. I mean, you're right in the middle of it. If he hits down on it, the sand's going to fluff it. Well, he's taking his uh, practice swings and other divots, Raymond. Trying to get a feel for what he's got. That's pretty clever. He has 137 yards for the hole, fellas, and uh, the ball is not only in that sand filled divot, it has settled slightly. You know, the weight of the ball has just kind of settled down, so that's going to compound the problem. Roger, wouldn't like a little seven iron or eight iron just back in your stance and just chip it and let it just hit 40 yards short of the green and run right down onto the green be a good little shot? That is an option. You could play it up the left side and let the slope just run it and chase it down into the center of the green would be the safer shot to play, although a tricky one. Uh, but to me, that's the easiest way to catch a clean, though. I mean, you could just sort of half skull it down onto the green, you know. I agree with you, Jim. Yeah. Uh, but that's not a shot that we normally play over here. Uh, if he tries to fly the ball up onto the green, then I think he takes a greater chance of catching the ball heavy. This is a nine iron, so I think he's going to try to fly this ball onto the green. Sound like he hit it clean. Actually, he got a little heavy and it's going right. Bunker. That's in the front bunker, could be buried. Mm. Boy, there's that came out. It looks like, looks like that's a better lie than he had out in the fairway in that <laughs> sandy divot. About equal. That just wasn't good. Looks like he's going to come right down steep and try to hit the ball first. See all of that sand? come up when he when he hits down on it it helps fluff it as well so it's just a terribly hard shot and right over to 13 second shot for Nick Price in the rough that's an excellent shot Dan but he's at the point in this championship that he needs to make birdies not good pars 14. Lee Jansen from plus two at the start to even for the championship. One within Payne Stewart. Good angle on John Schroeder just putting right up the fall. Yeah, it's right up the hill about 27 feet. You can be sort of thinking of thinking about making this not a hard putt for this length. run at it and the par for Jansen to stay one behind Stewart. Stewart got a bad time on his second shot and uh, you will probably see in a few minutes uh, the official come out to notify him of that fact and there he is right now that's uh, Tom Meeks doing the timing. Hey, Stewart ready to go now with his third ball has just come out of the crater but there's nothing behind his ball but air. Not a good lie. What a pretty good shot. Pretty good shot. He's got a good chance for his par. Would have been an awesome shot if he carried about another six inches, Raymond. Yeah, exactly. And over to 13, Nick Price trying to save par, remain at plus three. Got it. Yeah. Nick Price hangs on to a glimmer of hope as he heads to the 14th, and we'll go to the 15th. Thank you very much, Dan. And here at the 151-yard par three, front right hole location, 
USGA saying it's the toughest location on this hole. There. Yeah. And at the final round, every time the championship has been played here at Olympic, the winner has made birdie at 15. But today, we've only seen six. So those that have made them have hit the ball past the hole and putted back toward the hole location. Gary, don't you think that he has to play this ball at least to the hole all on the fly? He can't take a chance leaving it short right now. Absolutely. Bunker. John, the players that we've seen struggle here have been the ones who have taken eight iron and tried to just carry the ball onto the front part of the green. And if he is smart, he'll take the seven iron and play to the center of the putting surface. That, that is right at it, Gary. Right at it. Oh, look at this shot. Very well played. Carried the ball to the hole, just what he needed to do. Ended up in the dead middle of the green, and that is a makeable putt. Go back to 12. And while Jansen continues to fire at the holes, Dane Stewart continues to struggle to hang on. Another par-saving putt here at 12. Roger. Now there is a bit of slope off of the bunkers on the right that I think influences this putt some, certainly in the start. Uh, it should not break too much, but it's not an easy putt to read at all. And it did move left with that slope off the bunker. And with that, the lead has evaporated on Payne Stewart. Four to begin the day. Jansen probably has no idea what's just transpired at 12. He heads up to another good shot at 15, and he is even with Payne Stewart. This for bogey. Lee Jansen tied now with Payne Stewart. Jansen through 14. Payne Stewart's reaction. The lead is all gone. Welcome back. Currently a battle of two former U.S. Open champions. Payne Stewart led by seven strokes today after the third hole. Eleven holes later, Lee Jansen, who won this title, in 93 is tied for the lead. And we go to 15. Where Lee Jansen is eyeballing a putt for yet another birdie. Gary walking up here, they just posted the score here on the scoreboard at this green. The crowd went crazy, obviously, and Lee didn't even flinch. He didn't look at the scoreboard or anything. I think he is really just focusing on making pars until the very end and maybe make a birdie and then see what happens. Well, he's had success here at 15, John. Two birdies, one yesterday and one on Friday here. So he has some good vibes. Well, he's, he's in the ideal position, you said, to, to make birdies, putting back up the hill about 22 feet. Ball moves a little bit to the right as it gets near the hole. Great look into his eyes there. but yet still appears to be fairly relaxed. This put for a birdie and the outright lead. Back to 13. Thanks, Gary. Tom Lehman has already teed off his ball on the green. This is a hole. You can get a stroke back. It is birdieable today, but for the first time in three days, Payne Stewart does not have an outright lead. This is a five iron. Try to turn in right to left, let the ball get back to the hole. 
Ball going at the center of the green. Good looking Looks shot. pretty good. Whoop. Oh my. Uh oh. Things aren't looking good now. Hitting from our vantage point. It looks like a two-man race at the point, but still with Nick Price and Tom Lehman there, only three behind, a birdie or two coming in, and boy, we've got a big wide open championship on hand here. I don't know if Payne knows what's happened there, but he didn't get a good break. He hit a beautiful shot. To 14. Second shot for Nick Price. See the ball above his feet, downwind, 145 yards. Hits it right where you want to hit it underneath the hole, straight up a putt. Birdie chance. That would be his first in four rounds. He needs one desperately. He's at plus three. Three behind the co leaders Lee Jansen and Payne Stewart. The first five men on the leaderboard, all with major championships. Jansen and Stewart have won this title. Lee Westwood. The Tiger Woods of Europe is what they have tabbed him at 18 with his par and a 71 finishing round plus seven for the championship. It appears that Lee Westwood will have the best finish by a European player. Here are those in the past Montgomery dominating that role four times. Go to 14 in the third shot of Bob Tway. This was a very poor lie in the intermediate rough for Tway. Played it nicely though, but still, like Raymond said before. When you're four over, you can't afford to be saving good pars. At 16. Lee Jansen will have the honor at this. 609 yard par five. Dog leg left that keeps moving left. One of the few holes here at Olympic where the fairway actually slopes with the dog leg. We'll go back to 13. Roger had a chance to check out the line. It is a horrible, a very hard swing at this ball to move it a very short distance. Up close, not hot. Terrible line. 16 again. That's a driver, and he's hit it absolutely beautifully right down the left side of the fairway, turning over. Great shot there. Playing aggressively on huh, John Schroeder. Jenny, he certainly seems to be in command of his swing right now, mm. hitting the best shots by far. A lot of momentum, and he made that curling putt at four, and then the ball stays in the tree for, what, five minutes while he's walking back to the tee, and it falls out and makes a chip in par. Back to 13. Tom Lehman has a birdie putt, but we're going to show you the lie that Payne Stewart had after Tom Lehman strokes this birdie. This putt back uphill will move a little bit from right to left. Go, go, go. Never high enough. Short. Never strong enough either. A little Roger. tentative with the putter all day. Roger, a lot of putts left. Have you noticed that? Yes, it's a little D cell, I think, John. Well, Raymond Payne Stewart has not made a birdie since the eighth hole yesterday, and he was faced with this lie in his second here. Ugly, ugly stuff. When you see a swing that... Look at that grass, Raymond. Yeah, that big of a swing to try to make the ball go 12, 15 feet. So with all this negative stuff going on the golf course here, I mean, he's still tied for the lead. Got to grind down and get this one down. You have got to keep it together. He's tied for this championship. Uh, you're still in front. Don't let it. Don't let it beat you. You got to get it back. Is this guy moving just a little left, Raymond. Just a little left. I think he might make this putt. It's a key putt. It's huge. Got to hit it. No. Not a good effort at all. Back to back bogeys recorded by Payne. And he moves to plus one. Trailing Jansen by a shot. And the 
first time he has been over par in this championship. He got off to a great start. But has seen his four shot lead go by the wayside. Now Lehman for par. And Lehman's still in it. But Payne Stewart heads to 14. Now trailing Lee Jansen. This is the point. 14. And a birdie chance for Nick Price. This was moments ago. And denied once again. Meanwhile, at 18, here comes the leading amateur player, the only amateur to make the cut. And you can hear them chanting, Cooch, Cooch, the 20 year old celebrating his birthday today. <laughs> I mean, this is this is almost too good, too much, too soon, isn't it? Well, it's it's certainly deserved, if you ask me. The reigning United States Amateur Champion and the great Masters finish, and the smiles, and uh, sort of earned it. And he played even through four rounds at the Masters this spring, and he was one under through his first two rounds here at Olympic 76 yesterday, and he's four over today. Tied for 21st at the Masters, and uh, he's enjoyed every moment. He's produced some great shots. He's currently tied for 15th, this 20-year-old from Georgia Tech. He's thanking the gallery for being so much behind him. Appreciates him. Now at the 14th tee. Teeing off from the right side of the tee box. I'm a little surprised this hole goes right to left, and they'll have to flirt with some trees on the right-hand side. You're the man! But he has ripped this ball down the left center. That is huge. Tee shot on the way for Nick Price at the par three 15th. Just left of the flag. And a well played shot. That is makeable from there. He needs to get one in, Gary. He hasn't made one yet. Go back to 14. Payne Stewart. Going with his through it again. This going down the right center, drawing to the center. That's ideal. Two good shots here. Very good shots. Uh, Payne Stewart, of course, seven under par the first 27 holes. Last 46 holes, plus eight. Both Stewart and Lehman safely in the fairway, but the man they chase now is Lee Jansen. Back with par 5 16th, second shot for our leader, Lee Jansen. Important layup here. Need to turn the ball from right to left. And he's done just that, and that's in the left side of the fairway. That will open up the whole location. That is ideal. Go back to 14. Payne Stewart is away. Roger. 137 yards to the hole, perfect lie. Ball a little above his feet. Wind behind him, a little bit from the right. Not an easy hole location to get at, John, with this hole cut in the back right. It's downwind and just a little left. Coming a little left. Everything wants you to, to draw the ball here, and of course the perfect shot would be to hold it against that wind and against that slope. Probably a good play would be hit it right at the hole location. It'll drift just a touch left and leave himself a 10 to 15 foot pot, and that would be a good spot straight up the hill. Keep it underneath the hole a little bit. This is a nine iron. And he is trying to hold it against the wind. It's a little right of the hole. That was masterfully played. Sixteen. Lee Jansen, our leader, preparing to play his third shot. John Schroeder, the yardage. He's got 80, 86 yards. Gary's got his 56 degree. I guess you call it a strong sandwich in today's parlance, because his other sandwich is like 64 degrees. This is where Greg Norman lost the Tour Championship four four years ago, shooting at this flag. I, I 
I don't think I'd be shooting at this flag, Gary. Well, I think you want to be just left of it, John. As you say, the green is very firm. If he goes right at it, he'll land the ball on a down slope. That's right at it. Well, it carries back behind the hole. It does manage to spin. We'll have about 20 feet left. 15th, Nick Price now for a much needed birdie. Gary, he has had chance after chance and has yet to convert. This one very makeable though. Moving just a little right at the end. Seems to have hit very few putts today that start on line. We go up to 18. And moments ago for his par, Matt Kuchar. <laughs> That's great stuff, huh? Isn't it parts? He has a flair for <laughs> Look at Dad. the dramatic. And Father Peter, who is a Florida amateur tennis champion in his days, he's learned to play golf as well and is a five handicap. Father and son, Father's Day, birthday. No wonder they're smiling. It's hard to believe Tom Lehman after that 300 plus yard drive in a green light special there does not hit the green with a wedge. Uh, Roger, what happened there? Well, it was just in the intermediate cut, Johnny, and it just didn't hold. The ball took a great big bounce when it hit the green and just released on through. Couldn't get any spin on it. The lie he has now, although not a good one, is certainly a far better than lie than Payne Stewart had the whole previous. His strength here is an advantage, isn't it, Roger? Just it is, because he's going to have to play a little bit of an explosion shot, Johnny, and he's just going to have to be real firm through the ball with his forearms and wrists. Really not bad at all. Interestingly, not a single birdie between these two men, Tom Lehman and Payne Stewart, and their entire rounds. Uh, Roger, you know Payne Stewart as well as almost anybody, and that expression on his face walking down that 14th fairway was not of anything, but it, he was mad at himself. You could see that he thought this was his championship, and he's let it go, and he's now got a whole different mindset. Instead of protecting, he's now, I think, playing with a different resolve. I don't know what you're feeling or I, what you're seeing. I would agree with that completely, John. Uh, I think, you know, he said before the round started, if I go making bogeys, I'm going to let other people have a chance to win this championship. And uh, now he's in the come from behind role kind of feeling, you know, he's got to go make some birdies. And I think you're going to see a little more aggressive Payne Stewart here coming in. This is outside right edge. He can, it's a definite makeable putt. Speed on that one, Roger. That's resolve right there, Johnny. That is really shows a lot about the man. That's wonderful. His first birdie gets him back to even and tied with Jansen as we move ahead. And Jansen now has a putt to regain the lead here at 16. Slice putt gear? Yes. Pretty good movement from left to right. It stayed straight a long time. Boy, it did. I think it surprised him. Didn't break the last, what, three feet? Correct. He did hear that roar, too, as he was lining up his putt. Didn't have much of an effect on him, but he certainly heard it. That was awful clutch of Payne Stewart there, Gary. Man. Back to 14. And the par putt for Tom Lehman. And that about douses his hopes. Mm. Tough four times in the last group and four times no silver cup. It's the Buffalo Bills of golf four straight years. Well, I can't say for sure he, he could hole out and birdie the next three. You never know in this game, but. We 
would be talking about a memorable open end. Yeah. Four back, four to go for Tom Lehman. Ahead at 16. B. Jansen with this two and a half, three foot putt for his par five. Charlie in a tie for the lead. Well hold. Jansen will move over to the tough 17th, which has been his nemesis through three rounds. Another look at Payne's birdie. Johnny, this is about the firmest putt we've seen him hit in a while. It looked low there. Yeah, but you know, it had the speed to, to stay up, didn't it? It did. I was surprised it hung in there. And maybe that's why Lehman missed his. He thought it would break, and it didn't. Fire rekindled in Payne Stewart. Now as we move. At the 15th tee, excuse me, Dick. This was the site of a poor tee shot by Stewart yesterday. Got to be careful not to go head hunting here, Gary. Yeah, it needs to just put it in the middle of the green. Holding this shot against the wind right at it. Oh, a bit unlucky. Landed right on the down slope and scoots well deep into the green. That had to be a beautiful looking shot from the tee, huh? It was right at it, Johnny. I mean, he was holding it against the wind. It was beautiful. There's a brow on that hill right there. There's a downslope right here. There's a brow that goes like that, and it hit right on that downslope. Lehman next to play. And Roger, I would think uh, tough for him now. Yeah, making his job even more difficult is the next three holes. The hole locations are all on the right with the wind from the right, and that's a very tough place for Tom to get at. And we see Tom Lehman in the four past four years when he's had a chance to win the Open, over par in the last nine holes every time, three over today. This now is an eight iron. This shot going well left of the hole. Well. Oh. Kick left and finds the bunker. We go to 17. And 17, the toughest hole 11 years ago and the toughest again this year. And it's been extremely difficult for Lee Jansen. There have been only nine birdies here at 17 all week and none today. And Jansen has played at plus five and five under on all the other holes. So this is a key drive. And figure out that plus five, that's bogey, double bogey, double bogey. And his resolve, we talked about the resolve of Payne Stewart's, he is on fire right now. Everything is wonderful. The two men who battled for this championship in 1993 are at it again. Lee Jansen, Payne Stewart, final holes for the 98th U.S. Open title. Fifteenth, Payne Stewart with a lengthy putt for a birdie. Is this awkward? Well, he definitely has to worry about the knob that comes into the green from the left-hand side. The knob we're talking about is right in here that it sticks out. That, Gary? John, I'm saying it's a good three, three and a half feet short at least. And not an easy putt. Moving to the right. See Tom Lehman replacing his ball, bunker shot. Ended in that position, actually scooted right by the hole. This putt left for his par. What's it do from here, Gary? John, there's not a lot to it from here. Perhaps just a little right to left. 
Yep, good stroke. Good up and down. We go to 17. So leader Lee Jansen, second shot. Last time even par won the Open, Corey Pavin at Shinnecock in 95. You can imagine the thoughts going through his head after two double bogeys in a row. Uh, just got to really regroup, get the ball on the green, any part on the green. But this hole location is the hardest one on the on the hole, and you got to be very careful of getting it long left. Let's go back to 15. Par putt for co-leader Payne Stewart. Well hold. Back to 17. Jansen ready now. 11 yards. Looks real good, Johnny. It's, if it's far enough. Oh, what a shot. But that's going to be an extremely fast putt there. But on the green here, you can't really complain. Now, you've been saying all week, Johnny Miller, a four here uh, is like a birdie. And he's playing great. 13 out of 17 greens. And with these fairways as hard as they are, 10 out of 13 fairways is huge. Now Jansen, uh, even though he is focused in on the work at hand, acknowledging someone who yelled some encouragement from the gallery. Well, he's deep in his zone right now. And we go back to the par 5 16th and the tee shot. Payne has struggled here the last two days, missing to the right. Got away with it yesterday. Well, he did. He hit it far enough to the right. It was in the area trampled down by the gallery. Going with the three wood, which he has done every day. Well, in fact, Gary, he has missed this fairway all three rounds. So needs a good one now. It's going to go through the fairway on that line. And that makes the hole extremely difficult. Payne Stewart finding the rough at 16. He may have trouble reaching the green in regulation. Lee Jansen on the putting surface at 17. We'll be right back. The battle between past champions continues. Lee Jansen, Payne Stewart, even. Jansen playing ahead on the green at the tough 17, and Stewart walking to his second shot at 16, the par 5. And Jansen's sort of out of position, even though hitting the green is pretty darn good. He's got it above the hole in a watch-out position. Uh, it's um, putting right down the fall line, and uh, it's just one of those you try to cozy it down and hope you get the right speed. Let's take a look at a, another graphic on how well he's played today. Just amazing uh, uh, how solidly his game's been since the fourth hole. He made the curling putt on four, and then the ball in the tree incident. Ever since then, everything's been great. After bogeys at two and three. You can see he's looking at his caddy's feet, it looks like to me. He just wants to hit it about right here, and that's it. Right there, just there, and then now it's trickling. Wow, this is a putt. <laughs> is great. Well, there's no double bogey there, Dick Enberg. Yeah. There's his par. By far the best he's played this tough 17. He grew up a big baseball player and fan of the Orioles. That was like laying a perfect bun. Back at 16, second shot for co-leader Payne Stewart. Not a good lie, but could have been worse. Trying to advance this ball down the fairway. If he can get it down there a couple hundred yards, it'll have about 160, 65 left. Right there in the crossing area. Well, five years ago, 93, Jansen and Stewart battled it out. Final group at Baldus Roll. Jansen at 16 was not away, but Stewart said, go ahead and play from off the green, and this is what happened. And 
and pain with this birdie putt. Jansen would shoot a final round 69, Stewart 70, and Jansen in tears accepted the United States Open Cup, a two stroke win. Here's 18. Well, it's just a little small par four in case you just tuned in. 347 yards is just really a three iron sand wedge. But uh, the green is the big tail, but you've got to hit that three iron straight, and it's a blind second shot. It's a blind uh, driving shot over the hill, and you've got to battle your nerves. You, of course, the green is behind him, so you got the long walk back uh, from the 17th green to the 18th tee. And he has played himself some golf, hasn't he? Since that leaving the third green, four under par, and with all the pressure, Four over par, and he trailed the pain sword at the time by seven strokes. People you see in the amphitheater up by the green on the left-hand side, many were there at 7.30 this morning to get a special spot, hoping that this kind of drama would unfold, and they have not been disappointed. <laughs> Meanwhile, at 16. Well, Payne Stewart arriving at his ball, and he's going to be left with a very lengthy third shot to a very difficult hole location. Gary, isn't he in the crossing, and there's no relief from that crossing. Is it real tight grass there, Roger? Uh, it is. It's very, very tight, John. He has 170 yards left to the hole, but the lie is quite good. Mm -hmm. A little upslope? A little bit of an upslope, but this is one hard-looking hole location. The pin looks just like it's sticking straight up out of the bunkers. <laughs> You're going to have to shape something in left to right. Wind helping slightly. I'm going to assume this will be a six iron. Try to move it to the right. Must be looking left of the hole. Anything right, very difficult to get up and down. Gary, you think you'll aim at that 16 marker right there and that, cut it off of it? I would certainly hope so, John. That's what it appears. This is a seven iron. Hit it thin. Miss hit it. Needs to get Gotta lucky go. here. Oh. That finds the front bunker. Fortunately, it kicked back. It did not bury, but very little green. Now we Jansen, who has parred this 18th all three rounds. Only 195. Carry on the down slope. Got a lot of divot there. Right down the middle, Johnny. That's going to hit right the crest of the hill and put it on down the bottom. There it is. It's the down slope and scoots and it'll run down in all those divots. It'll be interesting to see if he gets a clean lie. Because there's all kinds of landmines there, and he does. So <laughs> you got to say a little prayer when you go down there. Go, thank you for the lie. <laughs> you want me to? So Lee Jansen, currently tied. Payne Stewart doing everything right. From the fourth hole on, he has been the top player of the day. <laughs> yeah, let's take a look at Payne Stewart's swing. It is a tight lie. You can see on the edge of the crossing. Let's see, he's aiming left. He's aiming about over here. Takes it back, Ooh, that beautiful left arm, straight left arm. He's in good shape right there, good shape. And he comes down. He's trying to sort of undercut, fade one under here. And you could see he just got barely a little bit of divot, a groove down, face open, and lost about 10 yards on it. So Jansen and his playing competitor, Steve Stricker, walking on the 18th fairway. And there is Larry Jansen, Lee's father. He was present at Baldus Roll when Jansen won his first U.S. Open championship, introduced him to the game, but uh, was not his teacher. As I said, uh, through his Little League days, the baseball was his game, and the family moved from the Baltimore area to Florida, and that's where he started playing some serious golf. Well, he has tremendous resolve, uh, this Lee Jansen. He, he made a quote that I thought was amazing. He says, I come to the U.S. Open expecting nothing to be fair. I expect that if you hit it in the rough, you can't hit it out. Put it above the hole, you can't two-putt. If you hit it in the bunker, you don't have a shot. 
you don't hit good shots, you don't make the cut. It's a test of wills to find out who overcomes adversity the best and who has the most patience. And so far, it's been a good admonition to go by because it is a test of will and a test of skill and patience. And like I said, when he left that third green four over par and now proceeded to play four under the last 14 holes with this stifling pressure, trying to make a comeback on Payne Stewart, who's hanging in there, that's good stuff, I'm telling you. It's kind of kind of cute, Johnny. When I was uh, talking to uh, Lee's dad, his Lee's wife said, "Don't tell Lee his dad, sir. I don't want any distraction." I said, "I don't think we want to distract him either." Well, John, what's he got? Around 100 yards. He's got 111 yards. He's got a pitching wedge. He's down Man. there, down there in the hollow where we can't see him, but uh, he's in a pretty comfortable position here. He can, don't you think? Throw it above the hole location and let the spin work. But we're going to go over to 16 and Payne Stewart out of the bunker, third shot on a bit of an upslope, which will help. It needs to land it on the very front of the green. Fourth shot. Oh, he carries it all the way to the hole, and that trickles a good nine or 10 feet by, back to 18. You can see intimidation there with that big bunker sticking up there. Can't see the bottom of the green. Main thing is hit it solidly. Right at it, Johnny. Right at it. Let's see how good he interprets the yardage. That should spin back a little bit. Um, see if it comes back. And it's hanging up there today, so he's going to have the fastest putt of his life here. So he's going to have to just nurse it down there, cozy it in there. Most likely it'll run by three, four feet, and he'll have that putt very with a good chance of uh, winning the open right there if he can two putt. 33 year old Lee Jansen is home in the Orlando area, as is the case with. Payne Stewart. Tom Lehman now at 16. This is Lehman's fourth shot. Found the little rough after two. Got the ball to that position. That'll be a nice five, but a little too late, I'm afraid, for Lehman. Gary, you got to appreciate Lee Jansen with how he's routined all these tough holes, the last uh, 14 holes. Isn't it amazing? Well, I don't think there's any question, Johnny. He's been the man who's hit the ball the best in this last round. Now the walk up the hill at 18. Thousands in the gallery surrounding this finishing hole at Olympic. I thought a very intelligent shot uh, by him to get it above the hole. Uh, don't mess with it. Uh, and if it wants to back up, fine. But if not, you're putting. Back at 16. Huge putt now for Payne Stewart. Trying to remain at even par and tied for the lead. Four, four and a half feet. He got a good look at the leaderboard. He knows that Lee Jansen made four at 17. Roger, that just uh, went off in his right hand, didn't it? That was a little trigger, Jim. That's one of the very few poor putting strokes we've seen Payne put on it this week. this desperately. Pretty straight from here, guys. Might turn just a fraction left. And Stewart with a bogey six. Our 516 falls one shot behind Lee Jansen. Again, for those of you joining us, by four at the beginning of this final round, had built his lead to seven over Lee Jansen. When Jansen bogeyed the third hole, 
Hutchinson with some meticulous play has chased and caught and taken the lead. And he stands waiting for his putt on 18 while Stewart moves to the toughest of all the Olympic tests, the 17th. Steve Stricker, and this mm. will benefit uh, Lee Jansen, same line. Boy, you think this isn't an advantage. This is really big. You know, Johnny, Lee still has not looked at a scoreboard to my knowledge. Steve's got to hit the ball up in this area here and just let gravity feed it down the hill from there. He's done just that. Now it'll actually pick up speed. And most likely, uh, Lee will have probably the best he can do is two feet from the hole, but he's going to throw it out a little bit more to the right. That's what he learned from that one, I think, John Schroeder, is that he can throw it out out in this area here and then let it die. Uh, is that and then it'll, he has a chance of just cozying it down there that way. It won't pick up as much speed. Johnny, I think that's what he wants to do, but I think he's got it set in his mind that he's going to have to make another short putt coming back for four. I don't think he wants to sit there and gee, say, gee, I hope I get it close enough. I don't have to putt it again. So you can see where he's looking. He is looking right there. He figures that he can stop it right there, then it'll exit to the left. Gets to watch Stricker again, which is nice. Pretty good putt, huh, John? Very good under the under the circumstances, and he got it right below the hole. I mean, he's, he should make it. He had to see this. There's no way that he walked up to that green without looking at that big leaderboard, just staring you in the face. Well, I'm, I'm, he may have, but I mean, he, he's he's just been focused on his golf ball since uh, the fourth hole. I agree. Meanwhile, Payne Stewart on the tee at 17. It looked like he just almost had tired legs coming into that. Here's Caddy. Leading for first cut, and that's where it lands. Now Steve Stricker for his par. Three over 73 today. Good championship for Stricker. On the first page of the leaderboard, his wife, Nikki, we've seen in the past, was his caddy. He's got other things planned now. In August, they'll cheer their first child. Now, Papa Jansen. What a Father's Day putt this will be. <laughs> Looking skyward. He's got a dead straight uphill putt. You just couldn't have a better putt to have. And, of course, there's not any guarantee Payne Stewart could finish birdie birdie, but um, However you want it. for the championship, 68. Sixth man under par in this final round. Lee Jansen has made his statement. He leads by one. Now it's up to Payne Stewart. One of the clutch performances I've seen in modern golf right there on a super tough golf course. Now one player in red figures, even par, the magical score the USGA loves. They got it. Great stuff. And the fans have been super this week, well behaved. Couldn't have been any better. Now it's in Payne Stewart's lap, Dick. This is his wife, we believe. That's uh, Beverly. It is Beverly Jansen. They have a son as well who is here, Connor. Payne Stewart. He uh, would like to replicate his birdie birdie finish in the first round. Remember, he finished birdie birdie birdie, in fact, and uh, if he can repeat birdies at 17 and 18, he'll wrest the title 
from Jansen. Well, if he can make par here, Roger, he's got an excellent chance to birdie 18. He really does. So the key part of the ingredient is to get this thing somewhere on the green, get your two putt par, which is like a birdie, and then go ahead about the business of knocking it stiff on 18 and making the putt. Well, this is very similar to the first round when he did make a birdie here from the intermediate cut of rough, has 206 yards to the hole. We'll try to run it up the ramp in front of the green. See the hole location right there. Hit this ball low. It's going at the left side of the gap and it's trying to climb. That's a really a good golf shot right there. Gorgeous golf swing there, Roger. Just gorgeous. The final moments of this 98th U.S. Open Championship. Payne Stewart still with hopes. Lee Jansen looks back, even par for the championship, leading by one as he goes to sign a scorecard of brilliance today. Twenty-five years ago, my partner Johnny Miller at Oakmont signed uh, that record card of 63, and boy, the relief that that part is over. But who knows? He may have 18 holes to play tomorrow as well. Yeah, Arnie was on the 12th hole. He thought he was leading on 11 when I posted my score, and he's got now about 25-minute uh, wait to see whether there's going to be a playoff tomorrow or whether he's going to pick up that silver cup and put his name on it the second time, which is an elite company. Or if Payne Stewart will rally with two to play and win it outright himself. That's possible. He could hold it out on the second shot at 18. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, Payne has a pretty good lie. He's just about 12 feet off the front of the green. And I guess the decision is whether to putt it or chip it. I would think as good a chipper as Payne is, he's one of the best I've ever seen. If he's thinking of making three, he'll chip it. If he's trying to make four, he'll putt it. Tom Lehman's away. Missed his second shot to the right, down in the area where the gallery has trampled the rough, and he's got some limbs between himself at the hole, so. And really about the only shot he has is to hit something low and just jam it into the hill and hope it'll climb through this rough. Another punishing day for Lehman. Not a single birdie on his card. He's three over. through the green and a little distracting because he will still be away and make Payne wait that much longer to play his third. So let's go ahead to 18 and Bob Tway from his second shot. First cut of intermediate rough. He's got a downhill lie, 140 to the hole. Currently plus four. Needs to get up. You, know, you watch everybody else besides Lee Jansen and you realize how tough a golf course this is, and especially the pressure, but Lee just waltzed right through all these holes just like it was no big deal, but it's, you gotta give him a lot of credit for the great ball striking effort. Lehman's fourth shot now at 17. It's tough, boy, when your nerves are jangling and you got it's sort of almost like icing a guy when he's at the free throw line with a couple timeouts. left for bogey for Lehman. Uh, Roger, this little pitch shot can get away from you to the right if you get a little aggressive. It can in the area of the hole, uh, just right of the hole, it starts falling away pretty good to the right side. But as I said earlier, Payne is one of the best chippers 
I've ever seen at a golf ball, and especially with his sand iron, I think he is. And you can you can see, folks, on the horizon. Look at this horizon. You see that fall there? That is a tremendous fall on the back of the green. And this shot here, if you get it going right, it'll just keep it'll keep moving right. And it's tight lie under pressure when your nerves are, like I said, a little bit jittery. This is not an easy way to chip, but he's very good, like Roger said, off his right foot. Great shot. That's a super shot, huh, Rod? It certainly is. Right underneath the hole, just an easy tap in. Try to get your three at 18, John. I think you're right. I think he was going for that. I really do. He was do thinking, too. I'm going to make this and birdie 18. He chips in more balls than anybody I've ever seen. He keeps it left. That was the key ingredient there. He played it four feet left of the hole. Layman for his bogey five. And this is the first hole. I think we've seen a certain resignation from Tom Layman. Tom doubles 17 to go to plus six. Well, Roger, he's putting himself in the same position Jack Fleck put himself in. In 1955, not many men have ever buried the final hole to put themselves in a playoff, but it happened here at Olympic Club, and it um, could happen again. Yeah. Courageous four there. Well, Payne Stewart walks to 18. We'll need a birdie to force an 18-hole playoff tomorrow. And here are the facts today at 18. Only seven men have birdied 18. No one in the final 15 groups. So he's going to have to dig for something special to force the playoff. Where's your oh my? <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting for that pitch in on the second shot. Well, there it is. You're looking at the... Tremendous crowd here at 18. This green, a tiny little green. It's only about 30 feet across. It's one of the narrowest greens you've ever seen. It was a very uphill second shot, a blind tee shot. Payne will probably be going with a three or four iron off the tee, which will leave him about 100 yards for a second shot and a wedge. So you have to ask yourself, can I get it up and in with a wedge for the United States Open? We'll soon find out. There has been one eagle here at 18 in the championship, Lee Porter in the second round. We'll share that with you as part of our final memories after this championship is decided. And Payne's had trouble with this hole, Roger. He uh, hit it right when he birdied it in the first round. He's hit it left a couple times. Uh, he has not routine this tee shot, if I'm not uh, incorrect. He has not hit this fairway in the championship, John. You're right, and it's surprising. Just an iron shot, chase it down the fairway, but. He has struggled. So first things first, uh, Roger, you gotta to give yourself a chance. It'd be nice to be in the short grass. I would think at this point that is a must. Birdied in the first round, but as I said, it was a miracle from the heavy rough on the right. Shot headed down the left side of the fairway. Needs a bounce right. He gets it. That'll be fine now, but he flirted with the left rough. See if he stays out of those divots again. Okay, Roger. Well, as Payne Stewart watches Lehman and then thinks about his second shot and the fact he needs to get down in two from where he now rests to tie this man, Lee Jansen, who joins us now. Will be a distraction, if nothing else, for you, Lee, as uh, we wait for the final shots from Payne Stewart. What a round, congratulations. Thank you. Lee, well, unbelievable. You make the curling putt at number four, right? And then you hit the drive. Tell us about the, well, the whole interaction on number four. Number uh, Take four. a look at this package here. He's gonna show you four and talk about that one. Okay, um, 
Well, I got off to a bad start, but at number four, um, I watched Steve Steve's putt, and it broke quite a bit. And um, and I just tried to see how far out I could play it and, and imagine where it would roll. And uh, I just played it way out there. And, and that time, I hit it at the perfect speed and curled it in there. It was, a, it was a great time to make a putt. But here, you were in the trees. Yeah, it hit the tree. We started off the tee, and uh, as we got near the ball, the marshals didn't seem to know where it was. And uh, as we got closer to the area, one somebody from the other side of the fairway Someone from the other side of the fairway. <laughs> I'm not keeping up fast enough, am I? <laughs> anyway, the ball was stuck in the tree for a little while and it finally fell out. Instead of a penalty, you wind up chipping in for your par and yeah, then the seventh well, is birdie putt. Right. And, uh, you know, the chip in for par, it was looking like double or more. So that, that turned the whole day around. I didn't make a bogey after that. And at the 11th, your second shot. You didn't see this bounce probably up close. Oh, I saw that it landed <laughs> on the left. Wow, it landed way up there, didn't it? <laughs> that uh, was a key uh, bounce right there. Yeah, I had a seven iron and went to a six because the wind picked up and tried to draw it against the wind. And You like these right to left putts today, huh? Yeah, yeah that, that was when I started thinking about that I was in the hunt right there when I made that. Yeah. So I was flying up until that the whole week. At 13? Uh, this was a very nice five iron. Uh, I hit that as good as I could, tried to land about 12 steps on the green, knew the green was hard, and it would run back there. And I figured even if it was short, I'd have a 20 footer, and the hole's the same size from there. That was the birdie that got you even, and now you had pulled into a tie with Payne Stewart. Yes, and here we are on my favorite hole in the course. <laughs> bogey, double bogey, double bogey. Did that go through your mind again? Oh, I wanted that hole today. You know, <laughs> I didn't want to have to say that was the hole that undid me because I parted today, and I know I didn't do well in the first three days. What was, I, what I was your goal it. on that second shot, Lee? Uh, well, I had about the same yardage to the front today as I did to the pin yesterday, so I thought, that's the same club. So I hit three iron. I thought if it landed just a hair short, it would could bounce up onto the green. and uh, Yeah, there I said, give it a lucky bounce. and I knew it was enough to carry near the front. And when I first saw it bounce left, I thought it stopped on the front of the green, which would have been great. But as it was, I made a great two putt from where I was. And for your par, and then at 18, with your father Larry watching, this for par. Yeah, believe me, that might not have looked like a long putt, but it, was, uh, it couldn't have been any longer. <laughs> Pretty good Father's Day present there, Lee. Yeah, it's uh, it's been quite a day, and um, I think the USGA. Because it does right by having 18 hole playoffs, because I couldn't play another Did hole. Did you have a, a premonition anywhere in there that maybe it was going to be your day? Um, well, I, I was optimistic the whole year. You know, you, you can't help but think maybe this year, maybe this year. And, uh, um, you know, I, I love the golf course. I think it's one of the finest strategy, shot making, challenging courses we play. And, and uh, I, I don't know, I just didn't think I was out of it going to the day. Well, it's, it's not that hard to shoot a couple over on this course. And I, put, I played really well yesterday. I knew I could shoot under par. Well, I'll let you and Beverly watch Payne Stewart and Lehman here on 18. Pitching wedge, 111 yards. Well, that's not going to show Payne Stewart a lot with that shot, but what do you think, Roger? What's he got? Got 103 yards, John, which is a little bit of a choke down pitching wedge just a little too far for the sand iron. Yep. He's going with 105. Whole location's right there. Just to the right of that. This looks pretty good if, if it'll spin back. See if it hangs up or comes back. Got an awful lot of fans pulling for it to come back. He leaves himself a very interesting putt. So that putt left for a birdie that would tie Lee Jansen for the championship and force tomorrow an 18 hole playoff. Well, Johnny, you've made that or, or tried to make that putt uh, hundreds of times in playing here as a kid. Uh, what will it do? Well, when I played it as a kid, it was running more like about an 8 on the stem meter. Now it's running a 12, so a little bit different there. It's an unusual hole location. It's a big right-to-left swinging putt. It's the kind of putt, to be honest with you, you might make one out of five times if you're not nervous. So I don't know where this is categorized, but a lot of it has to do with your will or whether you will that thing in. You're determined to make it. Now this gallery salutes Payne Stewart's effort in this 98th championship.
our statistic is that only seven players today out of 60 have one putted from above the hole. So this hole's playing much tougher than it appears. Not that many birdies today on uh, number 18. Seven. Layman is away. Well, Tom Lehman had, uh, of course, hoping that the fourth time was a charm, being in the final group, and just got off to that bad start, didn't he, Dick? It just, uh, right out of the blocks, he three putts, number one for a six, and uh, of all the things he ever thought of, he never thought he was gonna block his drive way into the trees, and then uh, end up making six there, and uh, never really recovered, I didn't think, and. Um, Not a single birdie today for Lehman. That, uh is hard to believe. So many people were pulling for him. He's a fine gentleman, a, a real, just a really popular guy to pull for. He never complains, really. And uh, maybe next year, who knows. But this putt, uh, of course, you've got to throw it way over into the right side of your screen there and then let it trickle left. And Lee Jansen, I'm sure, is breathing cotton balls about right now, but um, great position to be in. should learn something a little bit about the pace of this putt. It's a, a little show once it turns left how quick it is. You're going to have to hit it way out in this area here. Darn near an impossible putt unless you ram it to make anyway. So that for his par that would tie him for fifth with Steve Stricker. I might think about putting out. That's what I'd do. I'd uh, clean it up. But... but he's not doing that. Payne Stewart's father, Bill, in 1955, the year Fleck beat Hogan in an upset in the playoffs, played in the U.S. Open. Not that side. Go the other side. 43 years ago, two years before Payne Stewart was born. He taught Stewart the game. He coached him right into college at SMU. Well, I'll tell you, he's been courageous really the whole week. He made so many clutch putts because he only hit 50% of the fairways. So to be in this position, to be in a playoff of the US Open hitting half the fairways is really incredible. There's no doubt about it, just incredible stuff. He just really hung in there and um, wouldn't surprise me if he rolled it in. Got to throw it out there, depending on how hard he hits it. You can see the caddy pointing way out into the right there. And um, now I just got to go do it. Got to visualize it and let it go. <laughs> Lee Jansen is the 1998 U.S. Open champion. He earned it. Fantastic playing by Lee Jansen and a great try by Payne Stewart. Just need a little more pace on it. And Stewart who led by four at the start. Five ahead of Jansen. Nice 74. The second one is a lot more sweeter sometimes. You really appreciate it. The first time sometimes can fall on your lap, but that second one, you know how big it is. And same with Payne. He probably figured it was his early in the round. It looked like it was all Payne. And of course, the tears flow freer when your wife's right there enjoying it with you. 
Well, he's able to share with the entire family, father, son, wife. Well, there'll be another year for Lehman, 75 today. Finishes tied for fifth with Steve Stricker. So it's Jansen, Stewart, Tway, Price, Stricker and Lehman for fifth. And par indeed was a very good score for the championship. A lot of people talked about it, looked at this course at par 70 and said the 280 is a magnificent score with five, six inches of rye rough, small hard greens, open pressure, and this old course held up beautifully. Average score was about, for the field was about 16 over par for four rounds. And then you think about all the delicate shot making and yet luck played its role as well. If, what if Stewart's ball hadn't landed in a divot? What if Lee Jansen's ball had stayed in the tree? And you have to factor that all in. Yep, that's true. Let's look at Stewart's putt again, how close he was to a playoff. He hit a pretty good putt. Looked like he hit it a little bit on the toe when he came into it for some reason. Uh, my eye picked up that uh, that's a pretty solid putt. Threw it out there nicely, just looking good right there, looking good, and just needed a little more pace. So he struck it right where he wanted, didn't push it or pull it, hit a good putt. Doesn't have to feel bad about that one. With that, uh, the Jansons knew their name would again be etched on that <laughs> silver cup. Wow. And father. And the son is here as well. Just got it. Oh my. Labor. <laughs> well, we're going to have the presentation. It's an emotional day. This Father's Day in San Francisco. Lee Jansen is the champion. We'll be back trophy presentation. We'll have our final thoughts as well. A magnificent championship is concluded and a man called on his very best game to earn this title. Lee Jansen, the 98th U.S. Open champion. So here's the 98th U.S. Open leaderboard and remember plus nine or better Return to Pinehurst next year for the 99th U.S. Open Championship. Won by Lee Jansen. And the plus nine goes down to include Paul Azinger with a sizzling 65 today, the best round of the championship. And Matt Kuchar at plus nine. He qualifies for next year's U.S. Open along with Jim Fury. Now time for the trophy presentation. He grew up dreaming of being the next Brooks Robinson as a Baltimore Oriole fan. But baseball would not be his game. And very emotional as he was when he won uh, in 1993, Lee Chanson. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome the champ United Open in 1988, Mr. Lee Jansen. Well, Lee, so 
sometimes a championship of this magnitude is even sweeter the second time you are overcome with emotion. Yes, uh, I think everyone would recall that I was the same way last time and <laughs> can't help myself. What about your resolve today? Boging two of the first three holes at that point, you were seven shots behind Payne Stewart. What was your mindset then? Well, uh, I felt, you know, I hit a bad shot on three, but I felt a little unlucky on the second hole. And then uh, I just really had to, to suck it up and, you know, go on it. You know, even if I couldn't win, I just knew that if I gave up there, I'd be really upset with myself. So I just had to go out and play well and be proud of myself. Uh, at, at that point, I didn't think I could win, but, you know, after the birdie on four, I felt much better. And, uh, you know, I didn't give away a shot the rest of the day. And uh, I just thought if I could get within a couple shots on the last few holes, that, that I could do it. And, uh, you know, somehow I did it. <laughs> you did indeed. Lee, you've won other titles, but it seems like all the ones you do manage to win, they come on very, very difficult courses. What is it about you in tough, tough courses? I think that, you know, if, you get, if you're fortunate enough to have success on a really tough course early, that just makes you feel good about every time you play a tough course. Uh, obviously, every U.S. Home course is going to be tough. It was a dream to win the U.S. Open. There's not a day that's gone by that I haven't thought about winning it again. And now you join an elite group that has won it, multiple winners. Earlier this year, Lee, you were in position to win another big championship, the Players' Championship. You shot a 79 in the final round. You were very dejected, looking down on the fairway as you completed your round. There's been other opportunities this year where you have shot a big number. Did you ever doubt yourself this year? And how do you muster it all to come here and win this championship? Well, it's, it's been a while since I've won. So the longer you go without winning, the more you start thinking, can I win? Will I win? But you just have to tell yourself, yes, I will win. Whenever it is, it will erase all the bad Sundays, all the missed cuts, all the bad shots. And uh, you know, that, that was the one thing that uh, kept me going after the Players' Championship, shooting 79 the last day. That's no fun, but I knew all I had to do was win one tournament. I'd forget about it. You talk about great Sundays. To win this on Father's Day, your family's here. Larry, your father's here, your wife, Beverly, your son, Connor. What kind of emotions went through your mind on the golf course with them out there watching you pull this one out? Well, yeah, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Uh, I, got a, I got a great crew. I've got all kinds of friends here this week. Um, you know, the family and the friends. I've got great supporters. I, I'm truly lucky to have the friends I have. And uh, I'm just happy they're here. And even the ones who aren't here, I knew they're watching today and pulling for me. Also, I, I received an incredible amount of support this week. All week, starting on Monday, I, I was really amazed how often people shot up from the galleries that they were rooting for me and they hoped I played well. And I'd really like to thank them. Finally, Lee, any words for Payne Stewart? He held the weight of this championship, the lead, for a long, long time and uh, fought you gallantly all the way to the final hole, just missing a birdie opportunity that would have forced a playoff. Yeah, he, uh, you know, he led the tournament the whole way, and he played great. He slept on the lead every night. And uh, I know how hard that is to sleep on that lead and uh, play the golf he played. He's got some courage, and he really deserves something. I know he's not going to take the trophy home tonight, but he deserves it. He's a great, he's a great champion, whether he won today or not. Congratulations, Lee Jansen. Open champion for the second time. Now let's go over to Roger Malpe. Roger. Thank you, Dan. Payne, I know this has to hurt. Uh, out with a lead for three days. And you said it last night, if I go out and make some bogeys and don't play the kind of golf that Payne Stewart can play, I can be caught. Well, that's right, Roger. And I, I, I didn't go out and do what it, it took to win the, the golf tournament today. I made too many bogeys. I, I didn't hit enough fairways, didn't hit enough greens. So. S scrambled pretty well, <laughs> but it, it just came up one shot. I mean, At, Roger, the credit's got to be given to Lee, though. I mean, he goes out in third to last group today and shoots two under par. That's, you know, that that's some great golf on this golf course today. He's got to be given a lot of credit for the way he played. 
As you leave Olympic Club, though, do you feel that it was yours to win and gave it away, or do you think you just got beat by an outstanding round of golf? Well, two, two ways, Roger. I, I didn't play good enough to win today, and I got beat by an outstanding round of golf. Good luck to you. Thank you. Back to you. Well, the, uh, sharing the wealth in professional golf, this is 15 consecutive major championships with 15 different winners. And a man who still is looking for that first U.S. Open championship uh, will have to set his sights on Pinehurst in 1999, and he's with Mark. Tom, I know you're bitterly disappointed, but uh, things started going wrong right at the uh, first hole. Yeah, they did. For, uh, first hole of the day, that three-putt was a tough way to start, and uh, just the momentum never never got going in our group. Uh, neither Payne nor myself ever got any kind of flow going, and you know, just you see a lot of tee shots are ending up in the first cut of rough, and you know, just just one of those kinds of days, and uh, it was very frustrating. You said earlier in the week the golf course didn't set up well for you. Did you kind of feel like you were going to have to fight it in order to play really well today? Well, you know, you know, I'm getting better at cutting the ball, and and I feel like I hit some good shots today, but. Just consistently to hit the ball left or right is difficult for me. And, uh, you know, I hit it in the rough on 10, and, you know, I thought I had to go on 14 up in the first cup, you know, down the left side. It was just uncomfortable. And, uh, you know, but even still, I should have played better. As you look forward to Pinehurst, any thoughts right now? <laughs> you know, I've played awfully well, and uh, I'm really disappointed. I'm happy for Lee. You know, Lee, I uh, played very well. Uh, but I'm disappointed because I know that I was, you know, right there knocking and one over, you know, a solid round today. What a, you know, could have been a big victory for me, but uh, you know I'll think about it after a while. I'm sure there's going to be a U.S. Open trophy in your case before it's all over. Wow, well, I sure hope you're right, Mark. All right, back to you, Dick. All right, thank you, Mark. Well, there were a lot of wonderful stories this past week, and great pictures and great shots. And there are two men who help uh, make it exciting for everyone: Lee Chance in the winner, Matt Kuchar, the top amateur. Uh, it was a big comeback, five shots. Uh, only two others were greater. Arnold Palmer was seven back in 60 when he won, and you were six back in 73 with your victory. Well, you know, you have to have a little bit of luck, but the bottom line is uh, you got to shoot a great score, and he did. Uh, Jansen shooting 68 after being two over after three holes is amazing because this course really was the super champ. Not one player in red figures at the end of it all. Uh, Jansen should be commended. He played all those clutch holes coming in, super pressure and fairway, green, two putt or one putt every time and just made it look easy. And I'll tell you, not many guys can do that. We talked about the uh, vegetation here, the big trees. They cut down a limb. There were 105 balls in it uh, <laughs> a while back, and his ball didn't stay up there. There for a while, didn't uh, connect, and that allowed him to win the championship. Unbelievable. The ball's up in the trees, and looks like he's got to head back to the tee, and out it drops on the thing, gets it in play, knocks it over the green, and chips it in for one of the greatest fours maybe in history of golf. Well, San Francisco was a great sight, and it produced Sorry, some man. virtuoso golf by the world's very best.